Angela Stork of Stork Custom Mouthpieces. Today, we will be continuing our series on how the various elements of the mouthpiece work, and more importantly, how to get them to work for you. Today's focus will be on the rim, so let's get started. The rim is the direct interface between the player and their equipment, and therefore it has the burden of having to be the most adaptive element of the mouthpiece. This makes selecting the right rim for your lip type of critical importance. Fortunately, the rim has four major design features that make it amazingly adaptable for this purpose. These are the inner diameter, the rim width, the contour of the rim, and the bite of the rim. In a perfect world, we like to see that both lips are inside the rim and that they have enough room to allow the orbicularis oris, which are the muscles that work to close the lips, to function in a natural way, keeping the lips from being blown apart like this. And while having your lips inside the rim is not much of an issue for lower brass players, it is a critical element for the upper brass player, especially if you have lips that are on the fleshy side. So generally, we look at the following measurements as guidelines for selecting the inner diameter size for the upper brass player in relation to their lip type. For the fleshy lipped player, 18 millimeters or larger. For those with average lips, 16.5 millimeters. And for those with thin lips, 15 millimeters or smaller. For more information on selecting the proper inner diameter size, please refer back to our first video in the series. Once you've started to dial in where your optimum ID should be, you still have important decisions to make. The first option we'll look at is the width of the rim. The general rule is thin lips, wide rim, fleshy lips, thin rim. Here you can see a comparison of a wide rim versus a thin rim for trumpet and for French horn. For the thin-lipped player, a wider rim helps the lips to withstand the pressure of the mouthpiece. A thin rim on a thin lip would act like a cookie cutter, cutting into the lip and causing discomfort, at best. <clears throat> For the thin lip player, you'll be wanting to look at something on the wider side. A wide rim on a thin lip works like a snowshoe would, distributing the weight of the rim over a larger surface area, offsetting the pressure on the lip. This quality is known as flotation, a very useful concept for the brass player. How wide should wide be? Well, the qualifier is where the extra width stops helping and starts to cause problems. Yes, a wider rim will help to hold the lips in place a bit more, but it can also wind up pinning the lip outside of the rim and making it more difficult to use the musculature to reset and close the aperture. It's like the difference between trying to move something under a rock as opposed to under a small stone. For the fleshy lip player, using a thinner rim means less contact area on the lip. This helps to free the lip to vibrate, and the mass of their lip can offset the concentrated pressure of the thinner rim. Again, how thin is right? Up until it ceases to be of benefit. Going too thin will eventually cause the same issues for them as it would for the thin lip player. The balance between finding the best width for your lip is very much an individual equation. That is to say, where you personally fit on the spectrum will depend on the degree of fleshiness of your lip. This trait does not just reference those who do not show a lot of inner darker lip area. The amount of fleshiness that exists from front to back is also of strategic importance when making the proper assessment. The next option to be considered is rim contour. The major features here are flat, round, or high points. As for flat and rounded contours, their effects are very similar to narrow rims and wide rims. The flatter a rim, the more contact with the lips, making it feel wider, even though the actual overall width of the rim is standard by all other measurements. So even if your rim does not look like the old style cushion rim, if your rim is very flat, you can still be subject to the same repercussions. As for high points, the thing to keep in mind is where they occur, outside, inside, in the middle. 
High points on the outside can make the rim feel larger. If they're on the inside, the rim will feel smaller. For this reason, you can find two rims with the same inner diameter measurement that will actually feel like they are sized differently on the face. Another thing to be careful of with high points is that they don't become points of irritation. An exaggerated high point can make the rim feel very narrow with the accompanying cookie cutter effects. Finally, we get to the bite of the rim. The bite is traditionally measured from the high point of the first arc inside of the rim. I'm often asked why the measurements of a certain comparison chart do not match those of another chart. The reason is that finding that particular point is a matter of discretion. This was especially true until the more recent advent of CAD systems where these measurements can be more accurately gleaned. Back in the day, you would simply stick a caliper inside of the rim and do your best to eyeball that exact point. The rounder the bite, the greater the challenge. The likelihood that five different people would come up with five different measurements was immense. After all, you are potentially splitting thousands of an inch. Yes, inconsistencies abound. The bite is where most players really feel the inner diameter size of a mouthpiece, and it can go from being very sharp to practically non-existent. A sharper bite can help to keep the lips out of the cup, especially for the fleshy-lipped player. It is very common for the fleshy-lipped player to rely on a sharp bite to get a solid feeling of control from their mouthpiece. The extra pinning action that a sharper bite offers can help to keep those ample lips from touching the inside of the cup as readily as they might without benefit of a crisp bite. This is especially true when playing loud or in the upper register. Without the extra bite, this player's lips simply fall into the cup. This can also cause the fleshy lip player to have to use a deeper cup than might be optimum for them. On the other hand, the thin lip player will want to avoid a sharp bite. The thinness of their lips just naturally keeps them from falling into the cup and the sharp bite often causes serious discomfort and even cutting, so most thin lip players naturally steer clear. But even the thin lip player will start to feel unstable in a cup where the bite is too rounded. In our next video, we will be talking about cups. <coughs> cups, cup depth, cup shape, and what effect it has on the player. Till then... If you'd like more information about who we are and what we do, you can find us on the web at startcustom.com. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of these discussions, just hit the red subscribe button below. See you soon!